Greetings and peace to you. We continue, Soul of the Apostolate, Part 4, C4. He radiates charity. The chief ambition of a soul that aspires to sanctity is to possess charity. The interpenetration of Jesus and the soul, the state expressed in the words, He that abideth in me, and I in him, is the end that every man of interior life has in view. Experienced preachers are unanimous in declaring that although the introductory sermons on death, judgment, and hell are indispensable and always salutary in a retreat or mission, the sermon on the love of our Lord generally does more good. When it is preached by a true missionary who is able to make his hearers share in the sentiments with which he is filled, it is a guarantee of success and leads to many conversions. When there is question of detaching a soul from sin, or of leading one from fervor to perfection, the love of Christ is always the best means of all. A Christian who has sunk deep into the mire, yet who is able to sense in another the presence of a burning love enkindled by invisible realities, and who, on the other hand, considers the deception and hollowness of earthly loves, begins to feel intense disgust at sin. He has understood something of God, something of Christ's immense love for his creatures. He feels within himself the stirrings of the latent grace of his baptism and first communion. Christ has appeared to him, living and real, for the love of his heart has shown itself through his minister's countenance and voice. The sinner has caught a glimpse of another kind of love, one that is pure, ardent, and noble. And he has said to himself, so it is possible, after all, to love on this earth with a love that transcends the love of creatures. Yet a few more intimate manifestations of the God of love through his herald, and the soul will emerge from the mire in which it was held fast, and will no longer fear the sacrifices that must be made to acquire the love of God, which, up until that time, had been something almost unknown in its life. Though this is not the place to develop this idea further, one may easily see what great increase of love, and therefore what progress, a true pastor will be able to effect in souls that have already emerged from sin or have become fervent. Even those workers in Catholic action who are not ordained priests will be able by their ardent charity to cause this, the highest of theological virtues, to spring to life all around them.